Okay, example two. A cylindrical chemical storage tank with capacity of 1,000 meters cubed is going to be constructed in a warehouse that's uh, 12 by 15 by with a height of 11. Okay, so if we think about this, 12 by 15, and then it's going to be, of course, standing up, right? And this is going to be like 11. If we have a cylindrical storage tank, what does that mean to us? Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to have obviously the height of 11 meters, that's fine. But the diameter, the diameter is going to be the 12. Okay, so height's going to be 11, diameter is going to be 12, which makes the radius 6. We can't have a diameter 15 because in the width that is that is uh, 12 meters, it's not going to be able to fit. Okay, so that's just an obvious. So here are our dimensions of our cylinder. Okay, the sp specifications call for the base to be made out of a sheet steel that costs 100 meters squared. So the base here is 100 meters squared, sorry, $100 per meter squared. Okay, the top is to be made out of sheet steel that costs $50 per meter squared. And the wall is to be made out of sheet steel with a cost of 80 meters squared. Okay, so that's my, that's my breakdown. So A, determine whether it's possible for a tank of this capacity to fit in the warehouse. Okay, if it's uh, possible, state the restrictions. So we kind of already did that. Okay. So the height's 11, the diameter's 12, and the radius is 6. So the radius has to be between, sorry, it can't equal 0, has to be between uh, 0 and up into 6 and including 6. So if the height is 11, then we know that pi r squared times 11 which is our volume is going to be greater than or equal to one thousand. Okay, and we get that from the one thousand meters cubed. Okay, so that's the capacity. So if we divide both sides by eleven pi, eleven pi, and then root it, we get R is greater than or equal to 5.38. So the tank can be constructed to fit in a warehouse. Its radius must be 5.38 to 6 meters. And what that 5.38 means, just to recap, is that if we take advantage of like the full height of 11 meters, so if we make the cylindrical container as tall as the, the warehouse that it's in, then the radius can be as small as 5.38. But if we make the height smaller, then we have to extend the radius to 6. That's what that's going to look like. Okay, B asks us, if fitting the tank in the warehouse is possible, determine the proportions that can meet the conditions and the minimum cost of steel. Okay, so of course you want to minimize your costs for construction. So let's take a look at, we're looking at surface area, right? So the surface area of the top, or the cost of the top is going to be $50 times, what's the area of the top? Well, we just have pi r squared, which is just a circle, right? Um, for the middle, we have 2 pi r times the height. Okay, and for the bottom, we have 100 and then pi r squared again. Okay, therefore, the cost of the tank is going to be well, we have like terms here with the pi r squareds. Okay, so it's going to be 150 pi r squared plus 80. Oh, 80 times 2 is 160 pi r h. 
Okay, so in the cost formula, we have two variables. We have R and we have H. Okay, so we have to consider what we know right now. Okay, we know that our volume, so volume equals pi r squared h, we know that our volume is 1,000, right, meters cubed. So let's have this in, pi r squared h, and let's actually just divide both sides by pi r squared. Now we have an expression for h, 1,000 over pi r squared. So let's sum that into this formula. We have 150 pi r squared plus 160 times 1,000 over pi r squared r. Sorry, pi r. Okay, the pi's cancel out, those squares, the squared and the r cancel out. Okay, what are we left with? 150 pi r squared plus 160 with three zeros at the end over r. This is the cost. This is the formula for the cost dependent on the radius. Okay, so now from part A, we know that the domain is over here. Let's change colors. This is the domain. The radius has to be between 5.38 and 6. What does this mean to our question? Well, those are the two, two of the endpoints that we have to test. And then we also have to, have to find um, the derivative of c at r. Okay, so the derivative of c at r, uh, 150 pi is just a constant, so bring that two down. Okay, I have 300 pi r. Okay, and then I'm going to make this 160,000 r to the negative one. So bring down that negative one, we'll get minus 160,000. And then we, we have r to the negative one, so we can put that over r squared. Okay, when does that equal zero? So zero equals 300 pi r minus 160,000 over r squared. Okay, bring that over. I get negative 300 pi r. Oh, let's just make them both positives. Equals 160,000 over r squared. Bring up that r squared. Bring down the 300 pi. I get r cubed equals 160,000 over 300 pi. What does that leave us with? I get r cubed equals, I get 169.85 and some change. Leaving that in my calculator, I get r equals, we want to cube root both sides, right? I get r equals 5.5, round up to 4. So this value is within the given domain, right? So 5.54 is in that R. So what we have to do now is we have to plug in these three values, the two endpoints, which is the cost at 5.38, okay? The cost at 5.54, which is not an endpoint, but that's where our max or min occurs. One of the maxes or mins, local max or min, and we have to calculate the cost at 6. So subbing these back in, the cost at 5.38, we get 43,380. The cost at 5.54, we get 43,344. And the cost at 6, we get 43,631. Therefore, it's a minute, um, we want to, we want to look at the minimal cost. So the, the smallest number here, I get, I get 43,344. Okay. So therefore min value, min cost of 43,344 uh, with, oops, with the radius of 5.54 and the height of, go back to this height right here, 1,000 divided by 3.14 times 5.54 squared. 5.54 squared. 